One is known for his creativity in film and theater, and the other is known for his beef with Canadian singer Drake. Now, if you were thinking EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Mike Nichols is a theater director and entertainment critic from upstate New York, and Chris Brown is the host of the online show Cross Border Interviews and thinks that the Barbie movie should go back into the box and Oppenheimer was a big bomb of a movie. Either way, Mike Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as only two people who aren't the people you're thinking of only can. Michael, two months have passed. How are you? Well, first of all, in two months, you've been able to work on your <laughs> introing because that was in one take and I am shook. <laughs> you are shook, shook, shook. <laughs> I've been doing this a lot over the last few weeks, but how are you? I'm good. I'm tired. I'm overbooked. I'm overblessed um, and overjoyed. So, so last last time we caught up with you, you were just about to head off on vacation to Martha to the Cape Cod or to Massachusetts or whatever. How was Cape it? Cape Cod. Cape Cod was great. Um, there's not the fuck much to do there besides like look at JFK memorabilia, sit on the beach, look at some more JFK memorabilia. And then like we did a day trip to P-Town, which was fine, but it was also family week. So all the debauchery, mayhem, mischief and madness was not occurring. What's P-Town? Provincetown, it's like a huge gay area of Cape Cod. Um, it's actually one of the like gayest areas in the country. Is that where like all the drag queens go to perform and like sort of in get the their sort of crops? Yeah, that's what I thought. Because I remember, I think I remember hearing something about uh, Trixie and Katya on their show. They were talking about P-Town and how they had a sh- house in P-Town or pr- province. It's province? also a big... Um, yeah, province town. Okay. It's also a big gay, like gay bear area. So I was pleased. But it was it was <laughs> family week. There was like a lot of children and like like couple, like no thank you. I was just like, oh, no thank you. There's a lot of straights too. I was like, I oh, no thank you. No thank you. <laughs> um so it was fun. It was fine. I read six books on the beach um in the week that I was there, then went to ja- jaunted over to Boston. And saw Pink perform. That was really nice. And then August kicked my ass. Because you've been basically going, going, going. You've been doing a lot of directing. You've been holding auditions. So I can imagine it's catching up to you. And correct me if I'm wrong, because in Canada, we're having a long weekend this weekend as of recording this. You guys don't get your long weekend in September, right? Yeah, we do. It's this weekend also. Labor Day weekend. We're supporting the unions this weekend. I didn't know. I thought America was all anti-union, so I thought that might be We are. To... <laughs> Except for the long weekend. Well, listen, if you ask, depending on who you ask about this long weekend, it's about the soldiers. <laughs> anyway, on that on that note, um, so the two big movies, the Barbenheimer Clash of the Titans became basically a fizzle, in my opinion, uh, the two movies basically went up against each other. They were coming out on the same day. Barbie sort of took the mantle of the blockbuster summer of the, the blockbuster movie of the summer. Uh, it raised almost, I think it just surpassed $1 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Oppenheimer is not as popular as Barbie, as as you suspected. I will admit when I'm wrong. I, <laughs> I, I didn't know. Um, did you get to see them? Because I know that you were wanting to see them and you were excited to see Barbie, at least. Did you get to see Barbie? Oh, I saw Barbie. I saw Barbie when I was on Cape Cod. Um, I loved it. I did not see Oppenheimer. I just, it's three hours. I know it's going to get nominated. I'll like watch it when it's on a streaming service or something. I just don't have the attention, patience, energy to devote to a three hour movie with of a bunch of white men talking in a room. So I, I have to be real. Barbie was a delight. It was fun. It knew exactly what it was. It's also the highest grossing film in all time for Warner Brothers. And I think it might be the highest grossing film of... A female director. It's for sure a female director. It's also the highest grossing film, I think, of all time right now. Uh, I think it, it's, it, it surpassed the Titanic. I think it's uh, cl- it's knocking on Avatar's door. Because I think it, it, right now it goes, if I'm not mistaken, it goes Avatar, Avengers, uh, Endgame, uh, and then uh, Titanic. But it could be changed now that last time I've checked. So it is the highest grossing film of the year globally. Yeah, which does not um, shock. 
does not shock it me. Surpassed the Dark Knight. It surpassed Deathly Hollows. So it's knocking on the door of Avengers. And so it hasn't surpassed it by the time of recording this, but it, it's up there. Um, now, I want to get your opinion on it because you alluded to some fan theories about Adam and Eve and the story of Adam. Triggered. And- yeah. Listen, I liked it, but I was like, this could have been more clever than it was. It was like a little bit cookie cutter, which I I, I was fine with it. I, I I think I my expectations did not match my reality and that dimmed the shine a bit for me. But I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was fun. I liked it. I I had so much fun watching it. I cackled a lot. Um I quote it all the time now. My favorite thing at work is to just look at people, look at my coworkers and be like, you guys ever think about death? We do all the time. Such work. Good times. Um, so it lived up to hype. It lived up to the hype, but there was controversy around it because the right wing was kind of triggered when the movie came out because it was <laughs> You Fucking stay your... mad. Stay mad. <laughs> I don't even care anymore. Stay mad. It, it's a movie about a doll. Calm down. Well, it's a movie about anti men, didn't you hear? Like, it's about how the men are destroying the world. <laughs> Not a lie. I stopped caring about patriarchy the minute I knew it wasn't about horses. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Uh, did you get up to anything else over the summer? Did you see any other movies or was Barbie your sort of claim to fame and not claim to fame, but was that the one that you were anticipating to see and everything else has just been so busy. You just haven't been able to see much because I will be honest uh, besides red, white, and Royal blue, which you're going to be talking about in a few minutes uh, in a few minutes. Uh, there wasn't really much new tv or movie wise that sort of captivated me to go i'm gonna go to the movies or i'm gonna go see it yeah i just had I, nothing really was jumping out as something i had to see movie wise there's a couple of stuff that looks like it's coming out i'm i'm am a, a little bit bummed i missed the blackening i did want to see that one um that's the dark comedy horror film uh about the board game that the group of black friends are playing it looked so funny. It looked so good. Everyone that saw it really liked it. I just didn't. Ha- I just didn't have the time to get to the movie theater. Um, I do want to see the Nun that's coming out in the fall. Okay. Like a lot of the stuff I want to see is now being pegged to come out this fall. So that's probably when I'll be seeing a lot of theater, movie theater, movie theater. Uh, did you get to any Broadway shows over the summer? No, I didn't have time to get to New York, unfortunately. The one day I was planning on going, um, my husband and my friend, we were all going to go together and see a couple of shows. We were like, nah, I just don't want to drive to the city. This is like the one weekend we have completely off. Um, and so we just all hung out at her house instead. Uh, but I did get to a couple of regional theater productions. I saw a regional theater production of Cabaret. I saw a regional theater production of um, a, new, a New Brain. I saw a... I'm about to see a regional theater production of Thanksgiving play next week. So I'm, I'm excited. One of the big stories that's been sort of grappling Hollywood and television and every movie production, television production, streaming production across America right now is the ongoing writer strike. But now a new caveat to that is the ongoing actor strike as well. Now, uh, I will be up front that in possibly a few days after this episode airs, we are going to be, I'm not sure if Michael's going to have time to do it, but I'll be sitting down with two strikes, two work, two writers who are on strike in Hollywood right now. We have a confirmation. We just were looking for a date to sit down with them and talk about what's going on and the mentality of what's going on with the writers and the actors coming together to sort of challenge what's going on with the uh, uh, big studios. So look forward to that a little bit later. But this is sort of upending what Hollywood is sort of known for is putting out content and the content this summer it has been movies and reruns and usually the summer is a little bit quiet, but we're coming into like prime time season where a lot of shows are starting to kick off, but we have nothing. Are you expecting that this is going to hurt the television and movie industry in the future? Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to see it affect TV more rapidly than we're going to see it affect movies. Um, Cause you'll see minimal shows occurring a lot. There's going to be a lot of like, 
game shows. There's going to be a lot of, um, well, even then, some unscripted. of the game shows, like Jeopardy's, one of the co-hosts won't cross the picket line because yeah, she's the other one of, is. So now yeah. she's taken over it fully. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting few years for even game shows, in my opinion. Um, unscripted game shows are fine. And we'll see. But there's a lot of unscripted reality shows we're seeing pop up. Like, it, it's just, it's TV's not going to be good for a while unless there's stuff that they had already kind of had in the docket that they would had filmed and taken up and kind of gone and run with other than that you're probably not going to see much because a lot of places shoot over the summer and shoot over like the fall winter for the year so realistically tv is going to immediately be shit movies have a lot like a lot of the bigger blockbuster stuff that's been being worked on for a couple of years so you probably aren't going to see like movies get too, too affected until late spring, early summer. You're probably not going to see much go up other than like smaller independent films. One of the big things that's kind of uh, a saving grace for the uh, movie industries and the te- television studios and the streaming services is uh, a lot of channels are bringing the streaming shows onto television right now. I know Disney has just announced that they're releasing, I think it's Miss Marvel via ABC during the summer or during the fall season. So they're taking the shows that they released exclusively on Disney Plus and going to be putting them on TV as well. So there you're going to see a lot of repeats. And for those people who don't have those streaming services, it's going to be the first time they might be able to see these shows. Um, it's a way to get around what's going on in Hollywood, but I don't think that's a sustainable path no. to, and it just doesn't sound like the studios are well aware of the longer this goes on, the bottom dollar for them is going to be hurt in my opinion. Well, and then a lot of the TV you see coming out is scabs. American yeah. horror story is all scabs. Ryan Murphy hired scabs. Ryan Murphy is pissed that this whole thing's going on and is trying to shut it down. Ryan Murphy yeah. is a villain. Ryan Murphy has been a villain. This whole season has been written by scabs and is like, why do you think Kim Kardashian's there? Oh, I didn't like, know that. She's not in SAG. She's a lead character in this because, like, I'm pretty sure the cast is all like new folks too. So it's not like the Sarah Pauly, the Kathy Bates, the Aaron Johnson Taylor, or whatever the gentleman's name is. I forget his name right now because uh, I can picture him. Ben Wittrock. Yeah, and then uh, Dylan McDermott and all that. So it's all new people. Yeah, uh, Cara Delevingne, Kim Kardashian, Emma Roberts. Roberts is crossing the picket line. That's yeah. Shocking. You'd be surprised. Uh, like I'm shocked that her aunt isn't going up there and like. Zachary Quinto, MJ Rodriguez. So I, I've got to ask, though, how much of this was written and filmed before the strike and how much is filmed after the strike? So, Well, it was written by Scabs. Okay. And then the other unknown is a lot of these actors are kind of coming out and saying, before the actor strike, uh, I'm thinking of uh, Stephen Amell, Arrowverse, uh, came out and said that the ongoing strike is hurting and he doesn't understand it and kind of the backlash that he saw by not standing in solidarity with the writers and the actors. And then two days later, he was out there striking with people. This uh, this this is drawing lines in Hollywood, and I think it's going to hurt a lot of people who are coming out in opposed to the strikers. Well, that's the thing. It's a lot of the people that are coming out opposed to it are people that have already made their name that can come out and be like, well, why can't I work? Like, blah, 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 blah. I deserve this. Like, and it's just showing how gross it is towards like the actors who can't afford health insurance that are being majorly affected by the decisions being made by these studios. And that's why like Fran Drescher has come forward and been- Can I just really say that stick Fran Drescher that. being the sort of the face of this strike is probably the, the one thing I did not have on my 2023 bingo card, that Fran Dresser would be playing a major role in what's going on in Hollywood and Sean Austin to boot that. So I'm just shocked that these are the two faces that I see on the, on the news on a weekly, on a daily basis. Yeah, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And I think that... Um you're seeing them kind of really fighting for every single actor 
and sort of by default, every single writer with this. And so it's, it's one of those situations where I, I it's good. It's a good thing. The studios have been make have been making buckets of money, and are then acting like, oh well, you know, this is being greedy actors. No, it's not like Fran Drescher looking for more money. It's Fran Drescher trying to get more money for people like my friends who get a couple of gigs here and there and acting and like struggle, and are getting like the- screwed over by by residuals that aren't giving them anything. Well, and that's the one thing that I've taken away from this whole story is the residual checks. Like I, you, you like when it first was coming out, like I think it was in May, early May, late June, yeah. uh, early, early May, late May. Uh, like the writers and actors were showing the checks that would they'd be getting from the studio for like a series show where they did five guest star appearances and they were getting like 27 cents for a month. And I was like what (laughs) i didn't even know that they were getting so little so there is an educational part but the question i want to ask and i think this is the big question and i want to sort of pose it to us here and i'm going to pose it to the guests that i have coming on at what point in time does the public start turning against you um don't get me wrong there are people who are on strike who have made millions of dollars and they probably don't need better health care x y and z um does the public at one, at some point start saying, just get back to work, like continue striking, but just get or continue protesting, continue doing this. We don't care. You are all just a bunch of privileged uh, people who are making millions of dollars and they don't care about the writers or the background players. Well, you already see that. Do you? I, I don't oh, yeah. see it up 100%. here. I don't see it up here in Canada. So that's why I'm asking you. No, yeah, you already are seeing that. The line was drawn in the sand the minute it started. It was all like, and you can see it, especially on social media. People are already bitching like, oh, well, just get back to work. You're all a bunch of whiny, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's, and that's what it's going to continue to be. You're going to see the people support and this people not support. And it's, it's just the reality. But then even some of the people who are not supporting are like, well, these, you know, movies in Hollywood have sucked for years and TV has sucked for years. And it's like, okay, that's what they're trying to fix so that people can, you know, afford to eat so they can write better shit like calm down and so it's you've already are seeing that kind of drawn in the sand so i think that as long as this goes on they have the support tv's gonna suck and people are aware of it pick up a book rewatch a rewatch a show you really like uh go take a hike go try which is weird because you say go watch a movie go watch a movie or a show that you really like Still not getting the <laughs> you don't the, even, re, the residuals yeah. from that rewatching well, of that show. <laughs> or if you have it on DVD, do people yeah. still have DVDs? I still have DVDs. I have Blu-rays. I have DVDs. I have a VHS still. I have the VHS of um, Wizard of Oz. Oh, I have Betamax. Shall we? Shall we continue going back? I don't know what a Betamax is. That sounds like a character from Shut Disney. Up. Shut sounds up. like a Disney character. You young millennial, you. Um, so while this is still ongoing, there doesn't seem to be an end in sight right now. Um, do you see a sort of end of the tunnel here, or do you think this is going to go on for a few more months? Like, put your I magic mean- hat on. Like, when does uh, this end? I don't see it ending until like probably November. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Wow, you're more optimistic than I am. Really? I don't see it ending before the year's done. Okay. Um, And because it's not going to affect, like like you said, the summer's usually reruns. It's usually big blockbuster movies that have already been kind of made. It's going to be when they need to put shit on the TVs and they have nothing. Well, it's not that for me. It's the usually what's being made right now this fall this spring comes out for oscar season next year so what's not being made this this fall and this spring are going to heavily impact the award seasons in 2024 so oscars 2025 potentially are going to be impacted by this strike if it continues to drag on so at the end of the day, the studios are probably looking at their bottom line and seeing what they're doing and trying to figure out what movies can we push off. We're seeing the reshuffling of the schedule already where movies are getting pushed around. We're seeing TV shows getting pushed around because of just launch dates. I just, 
I think November is my sort of end date, but I could be wrong. They they yeah. might come out tomorrow and say, "Hey, we've come to a conclusion," which is highly unlikely. But I think you're it's saying twenty twenty four. Yeah, it has not affected the studio's bottom line yet enough. It's not really done much of anything. The studios have been able to kind of without. They they've still been making money. They've still been not affected at all because the TV shows were already filmed and we're going to end the. Um, <laughs> What's it called? They're already kind of done. The only ones that are gonna you're gonna see really come out things like HBO's television shows are gonna be kind of fine because a lot of them are shot in England or with England or British actors. It, it's things like that, but you're really gonna it's not gonna start to affect until like December or December January when we've gone uh, the entirety of the fall with nothing new on television. So the unknown that I've been watching and I, I just had to double check that I got my information right here is the SAG actor guild is giving waivers to certain sort of production companies, but also certain uh, uh, what's the word I want to use here, certain TV shows to ensure that they're able to continue doing what they're doing, but they can't work with the major studios if one of them in particular. And that's what I just had to uh, check was a 24 which just won many oscars at the which i was gonna say i'm sure a 24 is on your list because they're actually trying to you know not be a shit bag of a company no exactly and then they just gave a waiver to the walking dead the new walking dead spinoff i don't know why but amc i guess is good mm. so there are certain waivers that are coming out so i think you're going to start seeing studios and maybe this is the way that act or the guilds are trying to chip away at the major studios is hey look f you fox f you disney f you uh cbs and warner brothers we're going to start giving it to the unknown companies that you have no right to say that we can't do that because we can do what we want and we can give the waivers to who we believe are going to benefit our guild yep. members more so it's it's a fascinating thing, and I'm looking forward to this conversation with a writer because I really want to dive into what uh, what the whole background is and what the mentality and how the writers because he's worked with uh, uh, people from the Good Place. He I think he's written on a few uh, CBS shows. He's worked on a few uh, Fox shows. So I'm I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I want to talk about one person who I don't really know about, and I hear his name all the time, but I don't know why. And I'm pretty sure it has something to do with Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift, but I'm not 100% sure. But yes. during the summer, um, everyone was breaking up with Scooter Braun or Brown. Bra or Bra Braun. Braun. And I need you to explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old kid because I feel like I should be angry at him. But if Taylor Swift's involved, I kind of agree with him. So I don't know where I should stand. No, here. you don't <laughs> agree with him on this, even if you don't like Taylor Swift. it's So okay. Taylor Swift... She wanted to leave, go do her own thing, leave her record label. The record label owned the masters to all of her music. So when she first signed her deal, a lot of these record companies are super predatory and they do things like, um, we own the masters to your to five albums. And then once you write your sixth one, we own the sixth one, but you get your first album's masters back. And then when you write your seventh one, you get your second album's masters back and you own them. And when you write your, so she doesn't own most of her songs the record label does so when she was leaving her record label she was like hi i want to i want to leave I'm, I'm doing my own thing i got a better contract that's you know not so predatory and the record company said great we own all your masters you can't you don't own your songs and she said i would like my songs I, i'm willing to pay whatever stupid exorbitant amount of money that you think that they're worth the record company said well think about it scooter braun who was her agent also, who she was dropping, scooped uh, in and said, oh, I'll buy her songs. And they said, well, we fucking are mad at Taylor Swift so she can go fuck herself. And Scooter Braun bought the app, bought all of the masters and was like, fuck you, Taylor. So he owned most of her music up okay. until like Red. I think that's the album that she, she doesn't own any of it. So that's why she's re-releasing everything as the Taylor's version. Because then that way she uh, changed, okay. you have to change twenty percent of the way it, the song is. Is this where Kelly Clarkson comes into the story? 
Kelly Clarkson kind of told Taylor to rewrite the songs yes, and change them. Yes, she told Taylor to do that. Okay, okay. I was trying to figure out how Kelly Clarkson played a role in this because I guess Scooter Braun was pissed off at Kelly. And, oh, yeah. And, that, and, and, and the intricate web around this gentleman, I don't know who he is. Like um, He's a terrible know, human being. I know he's Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez's and Demi Lovato's. Well, he's or... not Demi's anymore. He's not Justin's anymore. They all dropped him. Like, everyone was dropping him on the same day. And people were like, what's going on? Has Scooter Braun finally be ta- been taken down? No, he's stepping away from his agency and he's going to uh, he's going to be CEO at a different company. And so it wasn't even like a them saying, fuck you, Scooter Braun. It was just them going, well, if you're not going to manage me, I'll, I don't even want to be with this company because I don't like this company. Oh, okay. So it doesn't mean Justin Bieber is a good person. It doesn't mean Demi Lovato is a good person. It doesn't mean who else dropped him. Like a ton of people dropped him. So, okay. He's not a good person. And like, no, he stole it sounds Taylor like he's, music. he doesn't sound like a good person. It just, I, I, I was trying to figure out the web, how this connected to Taylor Swift and Kelly Clarkson was involved. Yeah. I kept on trying to read stories. So it all comes down to this. And I'm going to put it bluntly. This asshole, it sounds like, is just basically ripping off these artists. Oh, 100%. Well, he is the agent. So he's not necessarily doing too much. It's the record label that ripped off Taylor Swift, but he swooped in and stole all her music. And they didn't even offer her the chance. Like, she was like, I want to buy it. And they were like, we'll consider it. And then Scooter Braun's like, I want to buy it. And they said, oh, perfect. We hate Taylor because she's going off to another. And Taylor's kind of popular right now. Like, I know she was popular a while back, but like this summer has been the summer of Taylor. Like, everyone's yeah. been go- Like, I was just on the cross country tour. And when I was going and I was meeting with people, even like mayors and counselors were talking about how they wanted tickets to like a Taylor Swift concert. And I'm like, the Eras tour. Yeah. And I'm like, why is this so popular? And now there's a movie coming out about the Eras tour. And it's just like, is a three hour concert where she basically sings through her entire catalog for the most part. And she has like 12 or 15 albums. So does the bubble pop? And I'm trying to be respectful when I say that, but does the Taylor Swift bubble pop or is she sort of the, the new thing that people are happy oh, I think about she's because she, she, rep, she represents a sort of a mentality that you don't fuck around with women and you don't... Taylor Swift weaponizes feminism. We can fully say that. Um, <laughs> For those who want to send emails, please send them to Michael. And no, she, she weaponizes feminism. <laughs> I already feminism said I didn't like her music, way, so... She weaponizes feminism in a way of saying, like, you can't critique me because you're being mean to me and that's anti-woman. There's valid critiques, and there's valid critiques I think I've said on this podcast. Like, I think she's a fantastic songwriter, I don't necessarily love her as a singer. I think her songwriting is really where she excels. Have you seen um, her I, in person? Live? I have not, but I've seen enough live video of it where I'm like, I'm just you not know, sold. You know those artists where you you hear them on the on the CD or album or EP, and then you go, this is an amazing. Then you see them live and you go, wah, wah. <laughs> like for, for me, Brooks and Dunn, that was my one time where I went to a show and I went, what did I just see? I just saw an hour of my life where it just flashed before my eyes and it was not anything like Brooks and Dunley. And I know you're rolling your eyes because I'm talking country music, but no, they, I, I just, I, I was so disappointed. I, yeah, I did nothing against her. I just, I think that she's here to stay. And, and especially with this re-release thing, it's brilliant because it also, the big fear was, Oh, well, you know, She's going to really re-release all this music, but people like the original. People know the original. And so she was like, well, no, they won't. My fans will support me. And the fans really have kind of 100% gotten behind the Taylor's version and are not listening to any of the original versions of songs now. And then she's doing this. She's, I think when her, because she's been releasing like two or three albums a year, because of the re-release and then doing new albums as well. I think once that slows down and she's just doing new music every year and it's one album a year, that might slow her a little bit. Or she might just say, I can retire off the Eras tour and I'm not going to do a goddamn thing. But it seems like she's making money, so why would you stop and... Hand over fist. 
Um, unfortunately, we did have some uh, not not sad, well, sad news if you knew these people, but we unfortunately had some big passings over the summer as well. Uh, the one that kind of hit me not hard, but I was like, oh, I thought he was already dead. Was Bob Barker. I didn't realize he was still around. So the, the former host of The Price is Right, unfortunately, did pass away at 99. Uh, Pee Wee Herman, I forget his actual name, passed away. And then the literally the day that we are recording this, it just came out earlier this morning that uh, Mr. Jimmy Buffett of Margaritaville fame has uh, succumbed to cancer and he has uh, uh, passed away. So three names that i saw over the summer did you see any names uh, i i know you and i've talked uh, religiously on this show about how these type of deaths don't really affect me affect us fuck the only one that affected me was the queen passing and i think i'm still in sorrow over that but here we are god bless the king god save the queen consort and god bless america canda <laughs> god bless america <laughs> but what about yourself queen lizzie you the Queen Lizzie, former Queen Lizzie. Now, um, Rip. what about yourself? Did you did, did you know? Like, I'm assuming you knew all I three. Knew of them all. People. Bob Barker got as close to a hundred as he could without going over. Without going over. That Again, is the worst legend. Jo <laughs> legend. Worst, worst joke I. Oh, heard. everyone on the internet's making it, so I'm not even going to take credit for that. I've seen it 17 <laughs> times today. <laughs> today <laughs> and it's he just woke up from a nap when he came on the show guys um yeah it, it happens the people pass away unfortunately uh rest their souls um but i want to turn to someone else who almost had their career snuffed out over the summer and it's kind of a story i didn't know about and i want you to explain this to me i know you just explained scooter braun to me but i want you to explain the ongoing lizzo oh. draw because I, from what I understand, a former backup singer or dancer came out and said things that Lizzo was sort of mean to her crew. Lizzo didn't respond. And then Lizzo did respond and people tried to cancel Lizzo, but then people weren't fully understanding what the whole scenario was. Can you explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old kid again, Michael? I can try because it's just so messy. So it, like, so it's not just me that it's not just me that that tried to follow it and just couldn't. And it's it's hard because it's just there's a whole there's three or four backup dancers that have come forward and are suing Lizzo, her production team, and this this dance captain for um, all this stuff like creating a toxic work environment and ha causing harm and like um, forced sexual situations. And it was things like. Um, Lizzo coming forward and saying like, hey, we're all going to the strip club after you want to come and the dancers feeling like they were forced to go or there was this really Christian um, dance captain that would like slut shame everybody and, and, and make people feel bad about their weight and their bodies. And uh, there's one of the girls was talking about how she was severely depressed and she was gaining weight and Lizzo had asked her like, hey, are you are you OK? You're, I've, I noticed you're gaining weight and the woman thought it was Lizzo bullying her. And, and we, cause we don't know, we're only hearing like, he said, she said across the board. It's Lizzo the three sides of any story, right? There's the truth. There's yeah. the one side that's true. The second side and the actual truth. It's just, we're not getting what yeah. the truth is. We're just getting both sides. And then Lizzo's now counter suing every single point that was made against these. It's just, it, there's a lot of like, he said, she, she said, and a lot of people initially accusing Lizzo of like, all this like really uh, severe stuff like sexual harassment, sexual, um, like forced sex sexual situations, like harmful work environments that are causing people to have eating disorders and 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 other things of that variety, uh, mental health issues going on. It's just not. And it's and then it because it's all he said, she said, and people are trying to be like, wait, like they're reading through the the lawsuit and it's. It's like, wait, some of these situations you could have just said no to it, but you, but we don't know like the current culture of like being forced to do it or not and how that actually would have been. Or if it was just someone thinking, oh my God, if I don't go to this, then am I going to be fired? And that was never something that, it's like so messy. And then Lizzo's statement that she put on Instagram was also not good. I've seen a lot of PR people on TikTok go through it and be like, this is just not a good statement. It's still better than Colleen Ballinger's 
I'm going to sing with a ukulele thing, but like, it's, it's still not good. Um, Lizzo was on a bit of a rise in 2022. She had sort of, she was kind of the it girl during the 2022 year uh, with a few of her songs. She had a few good songs. She was on a lot of uh, reality shows and this is kind of put her out of the spotlight. Uh, this These type of things come and go, um, but sometimes some celebrities don't, aren't able to sort of, sort of, uh, come back after a, even alleged scandal like this. And I have to say alleged because there, nothing's been proven in court. Everything's he said, she said right now. So do you see Lizzo coming back from this and being able to yeah. sort of survive the turbulence that's going on right now? Yeah. I mean, especially with the counter sue, it's just going to, that was, that was probably a smart PR move because it's going to muddy the waters even more. But at the end of the day, like Michael Jackson has pretty much all but been confirmed allegedly was a pedophile yeah uh, like it, it's like allegedly with like the lowercase of lowercase letters yeah at this point and it's like he people still are rocking his music and supporting him and it's one of those situations where it's like it is so like louis ck is still performing so uh, so on he that admitted note, to like yeah. jerking off in front of girl like it it's so hard to like cancel cancel somebody because you need to get every single human in the world to stop supporting and that's un- unlikely um, yep. um it brings up a good point because over the summer as well a certain actor was uh, reappeared in the limelight and that's kevin spacey um his uk lawsuit did uh go in his way he was uh got he was give, uh, like let off the hook for his alleged indiscretions um this has been going on for a long time since I think about 2016, if not before then for Kevin Spacey and his alleged uh, assault on some younger actors, a young, uh, young boys, Anthony Rapp. Anthony Rapp. I, uh, thank you for correcting, <laughs> clarifying that name. I was like, I want to say Jonathan Rapp, but I'm pretty sure that's not his name. Um, do you see Kevin Smith, uh, Kevin Spacey being able to sort of come back after all these allegations have been sort of either thrown out or disproved in the court of law? Yeah, we need what, almost 150 women to come forward about Harvey Weinstein before he was cast out. And even then people still are like, but he made he made good movies. Ooh. And like, but he's so it's he's hard. Already, yeah. It's, it's hard. Be... It's one of those things because you have to unanimously all say, we are not going to support you if you are in a movie. We will not see that period, no matter how good it is. And he is a good actor. And so it's one of those situations where people are going to be like, okay, I'm going to still go, but or I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch it when it's on streaming because then he won't get much money, but he's still getting money from it, babes. You're still supporting him and you're still showing Netflix. If we put Kevin Spacey on a streaming or we take his movies, then we are going to then people are going to watch it and give us the money. Because right now, part of the striking, none of the actors are really getting the money. So it's like, oh, I'm going to go and get this and or this or that. And so it's super gray area. You basically have to hardline it. Nothing Kevin Spacey is in, I will support. I will agree with that, I think. I, I'm always cautious to say that I would never support something in a million years because I just, I don't know. Circumstances well, can change and I just don't know. And that's so. the thing. And that's why people are like, that's why well, it's so and, hard to make cancellation stick. Well, and that's, and that's the other thing, right? Like, okay. So you talk about Harvey Weinstein. Yes. He's an asshole. He, he did horrendous things. He was found guilty in the court of law. Um, will I still go out and watch a movie produced by the Weinstein company? probably i and and i'm not trying to be rude about that it's just uh, like how do you cancel like even bill cosby right um unfortunately he drugged women he literally drugged people got sent to jail um if the cosby show is on the background in this sh- in a movie will or will if bill cosby shows up in a movie from like the 80s or 90s will i turn it off i don't know i haven't had that situation yet but I don't know. I, I did speak to someone over the summer where 
during the months when the ongoing trial of Kevin Spacey was like when the trial was going on, they said, I wouldn't watch anything from Kevin Spacey. I wouldn't do anything with Kevin Spacey. The moment that he was found not guilty, he's like, okay, let's go watch this movie again. Because the court of law said that he's innocent. So he can watch movies again with Kevin Spacey. So there's a lap mentality as well. So sure. I, I, I think you're right when it comes to, you can't cancel anyone in 2023 or beyond anymore because 100 percent of the people and for fuck's sakes the worst person who should be canceled still has supporters and supporters across canada and the united states but let's leave that there yeah it's just it's hard it is a hard thing to can like act, and which is why whenever you see people go oh my god you're getting canceled blah 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 like it, it doesn't stick it yeah. won't stick because you have to get everyone to unanimously stop you especially see it with YouTubers and TikTokers when they get canceled. They lose maybe a million followers, but then they still have the however many million left. Mm -hmm. Like they're still making money. Like they still are completely fine. So it's one of those situations where it's like, yeah, they got, they face a little bit of consequence and they're panicking. Oh my God, I'm getting canceled. But until all 40 million or 20 million or 10 million fully decide to leave, you're not canceled. Yeah. You're nope. temporarily inconvenienced. I agree wholeheartedly. I want to talk about one that was tried to be canceled, but it seems like the family of the person who the biography is based on is coming out in support of the actor portraying the uh, main character. And that is Bradley Cooper in the movie Maestro, which he is uh, uh, per performing as Leonard Bernstein, a famous American composer. I'm pretty sure I got that name wrong because Leonard, 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 Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> No, Leonardo, Leonardo Bernstein. I'm gonna. You're thinking it. of the turtles. You're thinking yeah. of the Ninja Turtles. Um, there has been controversy over the prosthetic nose that Bradley Cooper is wearing in the trailer, and uh, it seems like it was a day story and just fell by the wayside. The family has yeah. come out, but it doesn't seem like this is going to impact because at the end of the day. We had Brendan Fraser wear a fat suit and he's not that big. So it, it, it was, um, and I think when the family came out and was like, hi, our father had a big nose. You're doing a biopic to look like yeah. him. We like okayed him and they asked us beforehand and made sure it was okay and blah, 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 blah. I think that's when people went, okay, so the movie did its due diligence. We're fine, whatever. Yeah. But it like, it keeps like still like, cause some of these news are, sources are slow. So it cycles slowly through Facebook. So like, I'm still seeing it pop up. Oh, and everyone don't, in the don't... comments are like, that's stupid. It's a movie. It's a biopic. The Didn't you hear? Canada, we can't see news in Canada anymore. Why not? Because Justin Trudeau passed Bill C 18, which means that news organizations cannot put their news on social media, on Meta, on Google. So we cannot Google anything to Lucky find you. news. Oh, I, I actually like it. And there's a lot of people who don't, and usually the right wingers who don't, because you're That's how right wing media is being pushed out is through wild media articles. Exactly. So my news, my uh, social media feed on Meta, on Facebook, on Instagram is so clean right now. It's perfect. I'm so happy. I'm so jealous. Like Mine I don't have to, ads and news. Like, oh, I see. I see the ads. Like how many Tide Pods do I need to freaking buy? Because I talked about Tide Pods with my husband last week that we were almost running out of Tide Pods. If I see an ad tomorrow for Tide Pods, I'll be very upset. Um, You're the I one talking about it. It's on you. <laughs> I want to turn to a movie that you, you and I uh, both watched over the summer and we both probably read the book that corresponds yes. with the, and I think this is where we're going to probably disagree a little bit, but I want to get our personal opinions. Red, White and Royal Blue came out on Amazon Prime and it made a massive splash in the LGBTQ2S community across Canada, across the world, and across the United States. What was your original thought about it? I really liked it. I think because I loved the book. I think the book is one of my favorite books I read this year. Um, did you not find that it strayed too far from the book, though? It did stray wildly far from the book. And I think there's valid critiques of the movie to where I'm like, I like instead of having the queen 
having it being Stephen Fry. I'm like, Stephen Fry is a great actor. Should have been the queen. I didn't love the removal of some of the characters and some of the changing of the story to like where the junior senator and they, they cleaned it up for a movie because they only had two hours. You can only do so much in two hours. So it's like, all right, what are we doing? Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's cut these characters out that aren't necessarily needed. Like the parents don't need to be separated because you don't have however many pages you need to explain this story. You have this specific amount of time that you have to capture the audience's attention in a clean story. I felt it was clean. I felt it was entertaining. It should not have had an R rating. It should have been PG-13. Or if they wanted the R rating, they should have actually included things to make it an R rating. Um, I thought that the actors did it were perfectly cast. Um, Uma Thurman had a weird Southern <laughs> accent, though. That's what I was going to say. It, it was I, not I Texas. It was a West Mississippi. It wasn't even that. I was yes, pretty it was. sure it, it was it West was Mississippi. A, well, it sounded like a British person trying to do a Texas Texan accent. So, so West Mississippi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it, it, like, but I liked the movie, and I felt it. Uma Thurman, despite the weird accent, perfectly cast the role. It was. It would. I liked it. I just. I would. Is it something I necessarily think I loved? No, I. I liked the book a lot. I love the book, and so I think, I think the, the book was better. Yeah. But then I'm, well, yeah, that's I'm, I'm an, the case. I'm an originalist, so I, I just I felt that they left out a few of the key plot points that really upset me, because when they were at the end when they were outed, I was like, spoiler alert! When they were outed, I was like, oh, this this what what's going on here? This is not how it happens, and this is not how it trans trans uh transpires in the book and why the reasoning and who does it is kind of not the well, way it was a new the... character that they added to exactly the reasoning and they removed the character that kind of was the catalyst of it it just it also it's hard to capture because like so much of it was them emailing and texting you can only do that so much on tv yeah true true that um oh so uh, one last story, and then we're wrapping up here, and it's the uh, Shit's Creek, because we got to end on a Canadian story, because shit happens, and we have to go up creek with that shit paddle, and we got to make sure that shit creek paddle is up shit creek. Um, potentially, you did you watch? Shits, <laughs> did you watch Shit's Creek? Oh yeah, I love the show. I watched through it once. I know people religiously rewatch it four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. I watched through it once. I really, I love the show. I don't think I would love it as much rewatching it. Yeah, and that's my concern as well. Even with a reboot, like if you do a reboot, so the producers of Shit's Creek have come out and mused with the idea of either doing a reboot of Shit's Creek or doing a movie. Now, actors uh, Dan Levy and his father uh eugene levy wow i was gonna say andrew levy but it's not it's eugene i'm having a bad day with names people eugene levy and dan levy have come out and said there's a possibility if their schedules work out if everything works out they are interested but nothing's confirmed right now i hate the idea of reboots that are so close to the original like if this was about 40 years from now i'd say okay potentially but like you literally ended it three years ago, four years ago, potentially. And now you're already thinking about a reboot. Stop what you're doing, Hollywood. I know you're having a hard time right now. Producers, you may not be making money, but don't ruin a good thing with rebooting it. And if they do, I think you're going to have a massive backlash against people. But no, people me. really want it. People thought it ended too soon. And and well, I, I kind think, of agree. I don't. I, I disagree but I think, with but I think you. it ended perfectly. I could have been happy with one or two more seasons, but we didn't have any of those weird years. Like, cause there's so many shows that they overstay their welcome. And there's a couple of seasons that are bad. And then it has a final season, which is good. I think it ended perfectly. I would have loved more, but like, I'm content with that. I think if they were going to do anything, go the route of sex in the city and do movies. Yes. That's yes. fine. Cause you can tell a, a concise two and a half hour story in a movie form and then call it a day. And then you can do that every four, five, six, seven years if you choose. Yes, I agree. Unlike shows that overstayed their welcome, though, one show that we sort of jokingly referred to in our very first episode of just like Riverdale, we're getting a spinoff 
just like Riverdale, just like Schitt's Creek, Riverdale came to an end over the summer month, and it ended in probably one of the weirdest, if not the most surrealist uh, ending that I have ever read about. I stopped watching the show after the first season. I stopped and... watching after they introduced the magical stuff in the alternate world, and I'm like, okay, I have to pick this back up. They had like a five-episode alternate universe that then collided with their actual universe, and then it became magic, and... I, I'm like, I have to watch this because it's really gone off the deep end. Like every time I'm like, there's no way they can jump another shark. They jumped another shark. Oh, they I think they jumped the whale at the end. Like, I'm assuming, so you've seen, or I'm assuming you've heard about the ending where the four way relationship, the, the, the fropple or whatever you want to call it. So I, I was going to uh, title this episode just like Riverdale. We're not in a fropple, but I wasn't going to because a quad. I, a quad, a quad. Wow, I'm pretty um, sure that's the term. A quad. I don't know. This this tells you how bad of like gay lingo I have. I don't. Well, know. it's not gay it's lingo. Been... It's it's polyamory lingo. I think it's well, a quad. The, just just like Riverdale, we're not in a polyamorous relationship. Um, I I I don't know what they were thinking. I think they I think were so funny. I think it's I think wild. They were so out of ideas that they went sure. <laughs> Any idea that Riverdale could throw at the wall and stick, I think that they ran with, and I kind of love them for it. Like, And I'm pretty sure like there was three writers in the room left, and they looked at the wall and said, oh, there's a Thruple storyline we haven't done yet, so let's just end it on that, because that's the only one left sticking. Listen, the first season of Riverdale was so fucking good. The second season of Riverdale... <laughs> <laughs> started strong and then ended kind of weird and then the third season they're like why are we trying to be serious this is like a teen soap let's just be a little crazy let's try and like channel some 90210 and then from that point on every season it's like how can we top ourselves with like insane so it sounds like, like you and i are in the agreement that the show should have ended after season one <laughs> i mean if okay should it have ended after season one in terms of like standalone, super fun, like, wow, that was really incredibly written, really incredible TV? A hundred percent. Yeah. Now, but. I love Unhinged. <laughs> I love Unhinged. Unhinged people, unhinged media, unhinged things. This is why I we get along it. so well. <laughs> I love Unhinged. That show kept upping what it meant to be Unhinged. To the point where I'm like, where I had to pull out, and I, I have a big thing. If I start a television show, I have to see it to the end. If I get three or four seasons in, to the point where I'm like, I need to take a break from this because it's way the fuck out there. It's funny. It's entertaining. It captures my attention. There's 18 million storylines happening in every single episode. Like, it's just doing the most. I kind of love that for Riverdale. I kind of think it's incredible. And it's just one of those things where it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just support some really whack, weird TV. And it's turned like that entire cast into like serious actors too, which is bizarre. Ah, they I all get so much work. Even the one who played Veronica? Yeah, she's been getting a lot of work too. Uh, she's been I getting just... a lot of Netflix stuff and she's been getting a lot of the like, you're the mean girl uh, that's why I probably so, haven't seen her, just because I don't watch Netflix that much. She's been getting work. Like Lily Reinhardt's been getting work. The Sprouse is getting, he's looking at getting work. KJ Appa's gotten a bunch of stuff. It's like, it's kind of cool to see all this stuff that's kind of come out from it. Um, so I want to turn to our last thing. And it's kind of a weird question to ask because there's not really much coming out this month to watch or even listen to or watch on TV. But what's on the agenda for the next month for yourself there, Michael? Um, so there's an author. I was about to call you Bradley. <laughs> there is an author releasing a new autobiography, uh, a new memoir, one might say, on October 24th called The Woman in Me. Um, it is a harrowing tale of escaping uh, the clutches of her abusive family um, and her past lovers while it is a media frenzy going on about the whole thing oh it's god. by britney spears oh my god i'm so fucking excited for this it's the it's britney's autobiography her memoir the woman in me october has 24th she, 
Has she read it? I'm going to assume you leave Brittany alone. She's getting a divorce. Poor Brit. Oh, is this the ninth now or 10th? No, this is the second. She only married KFED. And the other one. Oh, so third. Celebrities, please. Judy Garland had like 12 husbands. Yeah, all of them were gay, though. Liza Minnelli also has had like 12 husbands. So, like, all of them were down. gay. Let's calm down. Um, Love it. So you- Super excited. Uh, the Nun comes out September 9th. Very excited for that. I, I like I, the Nun movies. I'm not gonna. I'm trash, and I'll admit it. I like the Conjuring movies. I like the Nun movies. I find them very scary and very fun. And I think that they do it on the shoeest of shoestring budgets. That you can't be like, like you. They don't do a lot of stupid like CGI effects. They like keep it cheap and they keep it simple. And a lot of the practical effects just work on me, and I'm okay with it. The one movie that we watched over the summer because my husband is similar to you. He likes those jump scare movies and he likes the sort of the exorcism part was the Pope's exorcist with Russell Crowe. If you have not seen this, I would highly recommend it because it is probably oh. like, I'm not one of those ones that will go into like uh horror and like demons and all that, because I just don't believe in that shit because I think it's all fake. But um he watched he got me to watch it and i actually liked it russell crowe i think he could do no wrong especially with his dad bod now like whoa, whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> what? what were those noises <laughs> that, that's the chris brown noises that we make um but besides that there's not much coming out for us like um, we... pokemon oh, dlc yes that comes out this month right or 13th. no that of September, the 13th of September. Okay, I I have to do Mewtwo this weekend too. I have to. Oh, I have sure to also, get... it's I think it's till the 15th. Yeah, but it's Mewtwo's only on weekends. But next oh. weekend, yeah, next weekend I'm not there, not here, so I have to make sure I do it this weekend. So yeah. I might do that after we're done here. Uh, so Pokemon, that's good. And then Detective Pikachu number two comes out later on this year, so that's gonna. Be oh, I don't fun. care as much about that move about that game. I didn't like the first one. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's um, it's fine. It's fine. I feel like there's a couple of movies. There's a, there's a lot of musicals coming out and a lot of plays that I'm trying to plan my New York City birthday trip to go see like 45 things like I did last year. Um, so that I'm excited for. I'm already looking down the list. I'm like, ooh, there's a lot of shit that I want to see. Spam a lot has been revived, which I think is wildly too soon, but apparently it's been almost 20 years since it was on, which Wait, makes Neil me Patrick feel Harris? Spam a lot. I don't know. Neil Patrick no, no, Harris he wasn't does every revival. No, it's got the. It was done at the James Kennedy Corden? Center. Is James Corden. No, come James with? Corden. James Corden doesn't do Broadway all that much. He used. To, he was a West End girly, and then he did. He won the Tony for Two Governors. Um, Is that what he won it for? Yeah. He did. He was brilliant. He's fucking brilliant in it. And I'm sorry, y'all. I know James Corden's not a great person, but like he was fucking brilliant in the show. Can I ask you a serious question? Sure. A serious question. What happened to the Little Mermaid? Did it I, just bomb? Like, I don't even hear remember hearing any good critics come out with that movie. Like, I remember you talking about that last year uh, when you went to D23 and you said it was going to be epic and amazing. And then I have heard nothing about that movie. And right now it's sitting at the sixth movie, uh, the sixth overall movie, top grossing movie in America right now. And I just don't remember anything from that movie. I remember it came out and then we talked about Ursula's bad makeup and that's it. Like, was it yeah. good? I haven't seen it yet. It came out at a time when I was way too busy to do anything. So I haven't gotten to see it yet. I think the the big, it, it was so media hyped because it was one of those, like people were all over the internet saying, no, oh, they're only doing it because she's black. She doesn't deserve it. Blah, 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 blah. They went and saw it and they went, oh, she was actually really good. And she can really sing. And then people, rather than admit they were wrong, just went real quiet. I think that's what happened, is that all the media frenzy beforehand was so loud that once it came out and people went and sat down and saw it and then went, oh, wait, no, she was probably, she definitely was the best one for the role. I think that's when people just kept their big mouths shut rather than say, I was wrong, you all were right. She did deserve it. 
I'm just going through the list of movies that are coming out in 20 in September. And the only ones that I see that I would potentially even want to see is saw X because I just, I like, I know you don't like them. Spy- oh, that's a double header weekend. Saw patrol. Uh huh. Uh, Dick's the musical comes out. Oh, that looks wild. Spy kids. Armageddon comes out. So, you know, gotta be excited for that. And this is the first year in the last three years where no Halloween movie is coming out in October. Sad. As it should not. Oh, The Haunting in Venice. Yep. Have you seen the trailer for that? No, I will have to download it or watch it right afterwards. That trailer, I was like, okay, whatever. It's one of those Perot movies. Who gives a shit? Um, what the fuck? That movie, someone put their whole pussy into that movie, into making that trailer. We have virgins ears listening to this show. So really, not... who, who, not you. That two minutes in college does not mean anything. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> Overall, um, though, it's gonna be. Oh, and I saw Dungeons and Dragons this summer. That's oh, other... I saw that one too. I liked it. I did too. As I go up, like the inflection tells you that I didn't, but I actually kind of did. Besides Chris Pine. Uh, every other person besides Hugh Grant in that movie. I, I liked it. Oh, they turned Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe into a movie? It's a gay novel. It's a gay book. Oh, and, oh the one movie, the, the one show I'm looking forward to this, this fall is Percy Jackson comes out in fucking December. And I am so looking forward to it. Like, I am so like... Unless mm, they have to push mm. it back. No, they've they've announced it. If they fucking push it back, and they've fucking ruined Christmas for me, <laughs> I will come after Disney. We're getting Disney. another Spy Kids. I kind of love that for me. Sure, go for it. Uh, um, but besides that, I've got a few books that are on the table that I have to read, and then after that, I'm just gonna be doing some touring again. So that's my that's my September and October, and it seems like we've got busy falls, Michael. As always, it's always a pleasure to sit down and chat to you about entertainment and see how unhinged we can get in an hour-long podcast. So greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. I'm always for the unhinged. So remember, he is not Michael Nichols, the EGOT winner. I am not Chris Brown, the R&B singer. He is Mike Nichols. I am Chris Brown. And this is, no, not them. Are you fucking impressed that I did that in one take? I'm so proud of you.